Let's take a trip down memory lane. I Not like all this. that far down memory lane. Right. Pete's put the top 16 picks from the 2018 draft in the sheet that we share. You can see it. I can see it. Let's just focus on the top 10. Okay. Let's focus on the top 10. Yeah. Because as Scott Fitterer said, you don't want to miss on a top 10 pick. You don't want to blow one of those picks. Right. Let's just start at the very top. One of the guys we've been talking about for the past four weeks, not because he's carving a path to Canton, Ohio, <laughs> just down the road from Cleveland, Ohio, Baker Mayfield. Bust, all told. They're, look, he's had two good years, two bad years. Not enough for the Browns to refrain from swinging for the fences with a player who is among the most controversial in all of sports right now in Deshaun Watson and paying him $230 million fully guaranteed over five years, unprecedented contract to get Baker Mayfield out of Cleveland. That pick, in hindsight, not good, especially with Josh Allen looming at seven. Mm -hmm. Anybody who took a quarterback before seven should have taken Josh Allen. Right. No, no, no question. You know, I, I mean, I remember Cleveland – you know, the day after they took Baker Mayfield or a few days after, remember, they almost had a press conference almost going like, you're crazy not to think Baker Mayfield was the best pick. Oh, I can't remember. It was personnel guy. Oh, Josh Allen. No, it was Baker Mayfield. Like, he was arrogant. I felt like he was talking to me, like, because I was, of course, the guy that was starting the ground. Was it Buddy well. Boy? Yeah, was it no, Buddy Boy? It wasn't Buddy Boy. It was an underling. And I'm, I'll, I'll figure out the name in a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on it. Uh, you know, you would know him, too, if you saw him. He, he had a high job up in the personnel department under Buddy Boy. But, yeah, I mean, there, you're right. Bam, right off the bat. There you go. 2018, here's your guys for the fifth-year option. And we're going to talk about Baker Mayfield, number one pick. And, yes, didn't justify being picked at number one. We know that. Don't wanna, I don't want to say bust or whatever, but definitely did not justify being the number one pick in the draft. In context, bust. Yes, I, I you're mean, right. You're right. They, they in wouldn't context, be trying bust. to trade him. Fine. Right now, you're right. If he if okay. he wasn't a bust right. for the first overall pick, yes, you're right. I, I agree with you. So let's go to pick number two and three. <laughs> well, I mean Saquon Barkley and folks, I, I, and I remember when the Giants take Barkley at number two, uh, we still and I think it's fair anytime a running back's taken in the top ten to mention the cautionary tale that number one, because of the nature of the position, there's a chance the guy's going to get too banged up to ever reach and sustain his potential to make that a pick that you should have taken over some other position where the injury rate is lower. Right. So you don't have that factor potentially keeping the guy from being who he could be. And you can get running backs anywhere and everywhere. So when you take those two together, as I've said time and again, and I've been saying this for a long time, you take a top 10 running back, you better be damn sure he's Jim Brown, Barry Sanders, Adrian Peterson, Emmett Smith, some combination of those, because you can find a good enough running back, not in round one, especially not in the top 10. Oh, and Saquon Barkley started off great, 2,000 yards from scrimmage right. as a rookie. Right. Great. But injuries caught up to him. He was offensive rookie of the year. Injuries caught up to him, and it was not a good pick yeah. by the New York Giants. It's one of the reasons Dave Gettleman's not there anymore. Yeah, you're right. Well, I mean, to, to your point, I mean, all you got to say is, you know, who led the NFL in rushing? Who have been the best running backs in football the last few years? Oh, Jonathan Taylor, second-round pick. Nick Chubb, second-round pick. Derrick Henry, second-round pick. I mean, Alvin Kamara, what, third-round pick? Fourth round? Somewhere in there? So, to your point, 100%, there's no doubt about that. I'm, I'm with you there. Okay, that one's easy. Sam Darnold also easy by virtue of the fact that the Jets hot potatoed him to Carolina last year. And I don't know that now, now Sam Darnold may be an example of a guy a little who bit. got ruined maybe by his first team. And this is one of the reasons why I'm anti draft. Sorry folks, you're gonna hear it. I'm anti draft. I think guys should be able to pick where they're gonna play coming out of school. And at quarterback especially, who's the coach? Who's the Who's who's who else is on the coaching staff? Who's the offensive coordinator? Who's the quarterback's coach? What kind of team is this? What kind of dysfunction is there in the organization that may spill over into the locker room? As we've heard Alex Smith say recently regarding the Washington commanders, is it a stable spot for me? Is it a spot where I'm going to be expected to play right away? Do I want to play right away? Do I want to learn behind somebody? All of those factors could go into it. You don't get to pick. They pick you. And you could argue that Sam Darnold got ruined by the Jets, and that maybe he would have been better if he would have started his career somewhere else. We'll never know. But surely over time, there have been guys who thrive 
because of where they land. And there have been guys who fail because of where they land. And there are other factors that go into it. Definitely. That first team, that first team is a real factor, especially when it comes to quarterbacks. Yeah, no, no question. Well, this is what this list is going to like reveal to everybody here because this is an interesting draft. It just it's, it reveals to you that it, that you can see here, and I, I will read off some of the other names, that people don't know what they're doing when it comes to evaluating quarterbacks. They don't. They look at too much other stuff, stats and wins and, oh, my gosh, and, you know, oh, my, Sam Darnold the year before he came out and the Rose Bowl against a Penn State defense that can't stop anybody, but we're going to make a big deal about it, and that's all in our head, and, oh, my gosh, and that, that's where – that's, to me, what's going to jump out about this conversation more than any because when you look at the list – other than Saquon Barkley, the rest of the guys, you go, damn, good picks when you start going through. Quentin Nelson, you know, Roquan Smith, Mike McGlinchey, Minka Fitzpatrick, Vita Vea, you know, Colton Miller, Deron Payne. You know, I mean, it, it's one good player after another. But the quarterback conversation is a whole different thing there. And that's where it's going to be interesting tying it back to Scott Fitterer and Carolina and everything there as far as what they're going to do. And are you going to, you know, just take a quarterback because, man, we need a quarterback and we got the sixth pick. And even though we don't think he's that great, we're still going to do it. Or, or, you know, are we going to play some other angle? But that to me is the thing that jumps out about this more than anything else is, you know, the, the crapshoot, especially to your point, when it comes to teams evaluating quarterbacks, we just see so many teams get it wrong there. And I always think it's because they kind of value or look at the, the wrong things when it comes to that a lot of the times. So what are they looking at that's wrong? What should they, because this is critical. We're three weeks away. Right. And you got the Panthers and the Falcons and, Hey, you know, the speculation that, that we've kind of locked onto that maybe the Saints got 16 and 19 to try to make a move in front of the Panthers and get one of these guys. What are they focusing on that they shouldn't be right well, now? Well, I, I think you heard me say a few of the things. The one thing is that, that I hate to hear when I go, oh, you know, a winner, right? You just mentioned it, a winner. Okay, great. You got to have some winners around you and some people around you to win. Just like you talked about with Sam Darnold of the Jets. So some, too many times I look at that and go, well, they're, they're, they're dictating the player on what the rest of the 100 players on a college football team and the coach did. They're going to boil it down to that one guy. You know, and that, you know what I love to say? You know, Patrick Mahomes ain't a winner. He was 4-7 and seven his senior year. John Elway was 3-7, and seven, not winners. I mean, bull crap. So that's the first thing I always want to say. It's not everything is not result from them, along with the well, stats. Tu- sorry, two and on, but look at Tua Tonga Bailoa. He's well, a winner because he's the quarterback of the best exactly team. Exactly right in the in the country. Exactly. So that that's where you know it just to me that gets overblown. Stats get overblown, right? That's another thing. Certainly. Oh well, well his stats. Look at his completion percentage. All right. Well, you know, are these plays and throws and things that are realistic to NFL football? College is a totally different game. So there's that there too that gets too deeply looked into you know and then you know sometimes people I I feel like you know oh he's got it or there's just something about him and you know hey with it and all that stuff too there's got to be something tangible right you know that that's that's to me what it is there's intangibles and talent that's what IT stands for for me and, and too many times people look at for the intangibles of, oh, he's Tim Tebow. He's a great leader. Oh, there's, there's Matt Leiner. There's just something special about how he leads USC. No, no, there's not. They're just awesome. And it looks cool that he's the quarterback. It's not that special. He just says set hut and goes, here you go. And the guy runs 80 yards and we go, oh, that was special. That's to me what people mess up too much in the evaluation process uh, with quarterbacks, especially. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.